Hi all, everything in my videos is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourself, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. This is follow-up video number three about the PR exercise because some more information has come to light, but this is gonna be a nice short video. I know that's what you guys really like. If everybody will look at the picture that you're seeing on your screen, this is the picture that was done in a story in 2019 by a woman who had had a miscarriage and she named it the stigma surrounding miscarriage must end here's my story the next photo while it's not identical gives you the same feeling it's a woman blacked out with white and black in shame which is what the other woman's picture also represented and of course this black and white photo was from megan markle's article in the new york times Interestingly enough, the article from 2019, again, is talking about the stigma surrounding miscarriage, and Meghan Markle's is called The Losses We Share. And the two, as it turns out, are quite similar, and here are some examples. So there's a line in Meghan Markle's article where she said that the cheerful tune was a stark contrast to her sense that something wasn't right. The article from the other young lady said that the Beautiful, cool spring day and my laughing boy were a sharp contrast to the physical and emotional pain inside me. And Meghan Markle ended hers by saying, are we okay? We will be. The article written by Kimberly Ross says, I am hopeful I am healing. I'm sure you guys are starting to get the gist of this. It seems like it might be a little plagiarism. Several of you also commented on a scene in Steel Magnolias that literally sounded like what Megan described, even though Steel Magnolias was about a woman rejecting a kidney. And so I have placed it up here for you guys to review. Tell me what you think. There we go. And we'll zip you up and we'll go trick-or-treating right after dinner. And let's go in and make some spaghetti. Ah, oh, Jack. Jack. Now, yesterday, an article also came out that basically touched on pretty much what I said yesterday in my other video. It's an excellent article. It's on my Twitter wall. But basically what it says is topics like this are sensitive and can't be criticized, which is probably why she opted for it. Let's be honest, she's played the race card, the victim card, the privacy card, the pregnancy card, now we have the miscarriage card. I'm scared what's coming next. After all, these kinds of stories are usually used to deflect attention away from other things, they can boost their public profile, and you get the sympathy card on top of it. And as I stated in my video the other day, she just wants you to believe that she's one of the girls, but it just comes off as very disingenuous and not realistic. It should also be noted, it appears from the way it was written that Harry and Meghan told the royal family about the miscarriage only because it was about to come out in the paper. It's not something they told them about over the summer. This also makes me think this is a setup. I completely agree with the article that's tacked to my Twitter. A large percentage, they, it's, it reads 80% who have commented on the story that have miscarried are saying that this is being used to gain publicity and sympathy and that it's no more of a stunt than walking on the graves of dead soldiers. And as an end to this story, I just want to say that if she really wants people to know how it feels to lose a child, she should ask her father, the man that she has thrown away like trash because he made a mistake two and a half years ago and took some photos, like she hasn't done the same thing since then. That's so shameful. This poor man has apologized more times than anybody should even have to, but she's one of those people, once you're out, you're out. The problem is almost everybody with her is out. Personally, I would love to have Thomas Markle as a father. My father is deceased and I just think it's a shame and she's gonna regret it when he dies. Also of note is the New York Times put this story on their feed every 10 minutes and was like saturating it to everybody that it could reach. I believe that they're saturating this story because they're trying to divert attention away from everything that I mentioned in my other video 
the Queen and Philip's 73rd wedding anniversary, Frogmore Cottage being taken away, Lupo dying, and they just want the attention back on them. Please, everybody, feel free to go to my Twitter account. You don't have to subscribe. Just go to my Twitter account and take a look at this article and read it because it's just so telling. It's just fabulous. I really hope no more information comes out. I really need to move on to my Travelist video. I'm just trying to keep you guys abreast of everything. As usual, leave your thoughts and comments below and have a great day.